All right, here it is, the special segment of the Mike Stig Show. It is February 26th, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. If you remember some racing commercials back on the radio. But uh, this, I picked up a sponsor. So this is not this, it's not this week's episode is brought to you by or sponsored or donation by. This is the real deal. It's, it's now sponsored by CV Management. I'll get to that a little bit later. In the in the normal part of the Mike Stig show, but uh, got a bunch of great things going on because not only did I pick up the sponsor, I finally met the person who's going to be the co-host or the other host. I don't know what her title is going to be, but the thing is, after months of trying to put this thing together, I don't even know if I'm going to call it the Mike Stig show once she's on the show. But I met her the other day, and she's smart. She talks well, and you know that's a big part. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be doing a talk show, you know, filming, recording, whatever, you got to be able to talk well. I mean, I I talk terrible. I don't know, but uh, she talks well, so that's a good thing. She has great stories. That's another part right there. You know, you can't just be someone boring and have nothing to say. And uh, she'll probably dominate most of the talking when uh, when she comes on. So, you know, having great stories is a good thing because, you know, we got to fill some time. And she's also famous, but I'm not going to say who she is. But she's definitely famous. And here's the part I like the best. She's a hustler. I only deal with hustlers. I don't deal with, uh, you know, she knows how to go and earn some money. That's the way it is. It's, that's a big key right there, you know, when it comes to businesses I'm in. But the uh, hustler is a major part right there. And she's also gorgeous. So that's like the total package right there. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, so that's when I bring her on and when she decides to come on, it's, we'll figure it out. You know, we're going to be doing, you know, the CV management will be having uh, different places that will be recording and filming. I think I want to lean more towards filming than recording, some, something like this. Like the past couple of social media posts of the Mike Stig show, I was just on a on a blank screen. But right now I'm on an actual video here in the uh, Studio 3 in the Stig's House of Fame. And that's what, ah, what I, I just keep on ranting. But anyway, I'll get into uh, what we're going to do at, at another point. But let's get into, you know talk about what I do. We talked about this, and uh, I explained to you that there was the possibility you might have to take some kind of loss. Yeah. I think I want my money back. <laughs> what are you going to do, strong on me? <laughs> you know, I think that you got the wrong impression about me. I think in all fairness, I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. For instance, tomorrow morning I'll get up nice and early, take a walk down over to the bank and walk in and see you. And uh, if you don't have my money for me, I'll crack your fucking head wide open in front of everybody in the bank. And just about the time that I'm coming out of jail, hopefully you'll be coming out of your coma. And guess what? I'll split your fucking head open again. Because I'm fuck. All right, so that's what I'm talking about. You know. You I didn't explain a lot of things of what I do, but in the beginning of the episode, before I got to the special section of the Mike Stig show, I was talking about sports betting and being a bookie, and uh, they changed the rules to baseball this year, where they made the bases bigger, and they also made a pitch clock. Which they needed to do because they need to speed up the game because people are just not watching baseball. Baseball is boring. I bet the game, I booked the game, and you know what? Nine times out of ten, I don't even watch the game. So they got to figure out something to keep people watching this. So these new rule changes is definitely going to affect the sports handicapping side of, of the business. But they're not worried about the sports handicapping side. No matter what, the sports han handicappers are going to stick around. You might lose one or two or three hundred, you know, but those are the weak people that just can't figure stuff out. And then, you know... You just uh, ask me and you, you buy my picks. It's the way it works. I'll figure it out. 
You know, I used to have I used to have a girl that used to set up half of the, my research, and then I come in and do the other half of the research because there's sometimes there's twelve games, sometimes there's fourteen games, and I got to figure out how to handicap all the games. So she used to set up half the half the stats and stuff I need, and then I just do the other half, and then it cuts down the time. But I gotta figure out. I need I need to find someone else that could do that for me, especially with these new rule changes. So hopefully uh, I'll figure that part out. But the new rule changes with the pitch clock, you're sitting there going, okay, so they gotta throw the ball faster than what they were doing, right? Real simple. But no, it doesn't work that way. Each pitcher has a routine they go through. You know, after they throw the ball and then the Catcher throws the ball back to them, you know, he's got to, he's got to pound the ball into his glove, and then he's got to adjust his hat, and adjust his dick, whatever the fuck he's adjusting, but then, but there's always a routine, you know, every time he gets the ball, adjust the hat, just pound the ball, adjust the, his balls, whatever he's adjusting over there, but uh, there's a routine. And even when I used to race cars, I had a routine. There's a certain thing you got to do. And, uh, you know, when I'm about to go out on the track, I don't want no one talking to me. I, I got to focus on what I'm doing. Sometimes people will come up and just start talking. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, you see, I'm focusing here. But every time a routine breaks, that's where, you know, something happens where... It doesn't go exactly like you're supposed to. And that's going to break break up the routine of the pitcher. Also, the batter has a routine. You know, he's got to he's got to touch all four corners of home plate. He's got to check swing. He's got to adjust his helmet. He's got to adjust his gloves, his batting gloves. He's got to adjust his balls or whatever he's adjusting down there. You know, he's got to dig into the ground again, you know, to get a good plant and so that, that's all going to be interrupted with these new rules. And I haven't even talked about the bigger bases. Why is the bigger bases such a big deal? And I'll explain to you real simple. The bases are bigger, which means the bases are closer. So if you're on first base and you're going to steal second, the, the base is now two inches closer. You're like two inches, big deal. I wish I had an extra two inches. But if you could get two inches on a base, then you're like, hey, that's closer. So now, you know, I can steal that base a lot faster than what I used to do. I mean, would you want an extra two inches? Who would turn down an extra two inches? See, he said it. He said it. He'll take the extra two inches, you know. you don't, If it's too big, then you don't put it all the way in. That's, you know, hide the salami. That's how it is. But uh, that's how these rules are taking it down. It's definitely going to affect the sports handicapping side. The smart people. Like, I haven't even seen any games yet. Preseason baseball just started yesterday. And, and today there's a couple games. I don't know. I'm still doing I was at the Golden Knights hockey game yesterday. And that's another thing. Uh, the, the, the game went into a shootout. It's the first time I actually saw a shootout live in a, at a hockey game. I've seen it on TV a million times. But I, you know, after the, the game is tied, you get five minutes of overtime, and if you don't score a goal, they go into a shootout, which is basically a skills contest. I think they should expand the five-minute overtime to ten minutes. There's got to be a winner playing hockey, not in a skills contest, and that's where football goes wrong. How is there a tie in professional sports? If it comes down to where everything's tied at the end of overtime, then go to a skills contest with, like, how far the quarterback could throw the ball or go to a, a field goal kickoff competition. But there's, you can't have ties in any sports. It's ridiculous. There's a lot of money being being uh, put out on, on these games on the sports betting side. There's a lot of money advertised. You can't have a, people are spending four or $500 to go to these games and, and there, there's going to be a tie. There's got to be a winner. So I don't know if football needs to really fix that because that's friggin' ridiculous. And then this uh, this uh, this ho hockey overtime, five minutes. Uh, here's the thing: in playoffs, they they don't even do that. They just play in, they play until there's a goal. That's 
that's how it really should be done. But, you know, you don't want them players getting injured. But when it comes to playoffs, they're like, ah, who gives a shit who gets injured? Let's just have a winner. Oh, maybe everybody should think of that, that. Like, hey, we should have winners. Football, I'm talking to you. NFL, you're ridiculous with that bullshit. No, what, what, what ties. There was like three or four ties this year. That's stupid. Anyway, Mike Stiggs, I'm out. And you'll see who I'm talking about coming up in the future. I don't know if she'll be on next, next episode. She'll be on. But we don't know. And it's going to be a surprise. Because when you see her, you're going to be like, you're right. She is gorgeous.